Um, I do worry that some of these stable coins, there's not enough transparency. And for me as an investor with significant amounts of capital to distribute, it makes me very conservative about putting too much money in any one stable coin. So, yeah. I mean, I, th I think it's worth keeping an eye on. I do, I would mention this, and this is going to the crypto side as well, is that if you saw last week, we saw the stock market really dropping heavily, right, into quarter yeah. end. The dollar had at one point been soaring. It started to pull back. But notice mm -hmm. how Bitcoin did not have a fall, unlike right. what it did previously in the previous six weeks or month or two months, really. And, and if I could just throw out this concept here, is that I would almost wonder if people in the UK, people in, in various countries where they're seeing their, their currency get clobbered by the dollar, potentially had been saying, let me switch some of my assets out uh -huh. of these, these like pound and into Bitcoin because our currency is dropping so much, especially with the EC, the, uh, the Bank of England interjecting there and so forth. So, so I thought that was very interesting how you kind of saw this divergence where Bitcoin always was going down with the stock market and down when the dollar would go up. All of a sudden, it didn't do that. And it came right yeah. as these currencies were getting clobbered. Hello and welcome to Money Talks. In today's video, President and Chief Market Strategist at InTheMoneyStocks.com, Gareth Soloway, updates about the green October for Bitcoin, good news after the Ethereum merge, trouble brewing at Swiss Investment Bank, and with Twitterati beginning to raise the specter of a layman-like collapse. Make sure to stick around till the end of this video where Gareth shares his outlook on stablecoins and the future of the US economy. Yeah, so I, I do think in terms of sentiment, like, you know, every move down in the market, especially we just recently pierced those June lows before the bounce today on Friday, we pierced them. I do think it, it takes its toll on sentiment. And there's absolutely funds that are leveraged to the hilt here. So hedge fund yeah. world, you know, it's out there. The leverage is ridiculous um, because, again, their job is to basically give the market or give investors a bigger return than the, what they could get in the S&P 500. And, and a exactly. lot of them have been programmed for the last multiple years that to do that you got to leverage up because the market always buy the dip, right? Always buy the dip. And so I, I do think you're going to see more and more things. I heard the Vision Fund, I think they're unwinding like 30% of, of the, the people in that fund. Uh, a lot of funds are already starting to unwind because they've taken such drastic hits. Bitcoin continues to build bullish momentum, hoping that financial stability risks and signs of economic slowdown will force the U.S. Federal Reserve to pivot away from aggressive liquidity withdrawal measures. However, some observers are unconvinced that the Fed will abandon or dramatically slow the so-called liquidity tightening anytime soon, and they expect renewed dollar strength. The top cryptocurrency by market value reached a high of $20,150, registering a 2% gain for the day. The dollar index fell to a 9-day low of 11, having hit a two-decade high of 114.77 on September 28th. I mean, right now, I'm not looking into it too much, but I do think you have to pay attention to everything right now. I mean, you know, you look at what's gone on with the Federal Reserve, how they've raised interest rates from basically 25 basis points or, or 0.25% to where we currently are in such a short amount of time. And to right. me, it was always, and I know I came on a few weeks ago with you, we talked about this. It's silly to me to think that the Fed how could they not think that there's going to be these ripple effects that are going to sure. cause major issues, right? I mean, it's not like you're going like Volcker went from 12 to 18 percent, 50 percent hike. Here you're going from 25.25 percent to three and a quarter. It's a massive move that's going to rock the system. So, so again, these type of things, you know, it, to me, it's going to force them to pivot. It really will. Bitcoin buyers stepped in on Monday after the U.S. Institute of Supply Management, or ISM said its Manufacturing Purchasing Managers Index, or PMI, dropped to 50.9 in September, the lowest reading since May 2020, from 52.8 in August. Notably, the index's new orders and employment measures contracted, strengthening the case for the Fed pivot. Yes, I would guess it's going to have to be a little bit more dramatic, but I think the, the, the dominoes are already in place. It's just, do you, does it happen if like Credit Suisse did go under? Is that a domino that would start that chain mm -hmm. reaction? And my guess right. is it would. I mean, something of that nature, but I don't think the, the kind of the threats right now, and I really do think that the Fed is probably paying very close attention. We know that the, uh, the central bank in, in the Bank of England last week was starting to get involved and stuff like that. So these central banks have to be fully aware. I'm sure they're yeah. hearing from big hedge funds 
fund managers and big leaders out there about, you know, you know, our currency are doing these crazy moves. This isn't healthy. I mean, look at the bond market. Insane. And, and again, if you're in, you, you know, where do you hide in this market when it's collapsing? Because you can't go to bonds. You can't go to stocks. Crypto's not really doing much. So it's a tough market out there. Um, and I don't honestly, I think you get these bear market rallies, but the the train tracks have been laid at this point, and I don't think there's much getting away from it. I, even a Fed pivot at this point, I think it's a short-term reprieve, and then we have more pain ahead. It's been a case of bad news as good news for equities, with the market treating the downside surprise to the ISM index as increasing the chance of an earlier Fed pause, seen as positive for risk assets. Bitcoin tends to move more or less in line with equities and has halved this year in terms of market value, with the Fed raising rates by 300 basis points. Yeah, so so for me, and, and number one, you're 100% right on the housing market in, in terms of interest rates. And I think it's important for investors across the world to pay attention to mortgage rates because that was the wealth effect, right? You talk about COVID and, and everyone rushing to buy homes. Interest rates were so low. Everything was, you know, you bought a house and then in six months it was worth $100,000 more. Right. I mean, so it made people just feel so wealthy where, where they felt like they could go spend. So for me, it's consumer spending, right? We know the U.S economy runs on consumer spending and we have to watch to see as people run out of money from that they saved during covid where does that spending come from or does it really go to the sidelines so i think those type of things the jobs market is going to be super key we have the jobs report on friday um i expect it to show a a, a solid slowing in the jobs market just based on the lagging effect how we should right. have already seen it but because it's lagging it probably starts to show up so like things like that are really what i'm looking for Economic indicators, we saw the ISM today. That really is, you could argue, kick-started the rally that the Fed is going to have to pivot because it did weaken so much. Expectations that the Fed and other major central banks would slow tightening gripped the market last week after the Bank of England, or BOE, announced a bond purchase program, popularly known as quantitative easing, to ensure the orderly functioning of the government bond market. And, and I do think that that is that is a likely outcome here. And I think I think this all comes back to the Fed. The Fed's been the leader in hiking rates. I think you, you see Europe looking to the U.S. And the, and the Federal Reserve and saying, hey, guys, could you slow it down just a little mm -hmm. bit? Because we're already yeah. in a lot of pain. And, and it's, it's important to recognize that even though you have these different central banks, the Japanese central bank, the U.S. and so forth, everything is so interconnected in this day and age that you can't, the Fed can't do what they do and exactly. not have an impact on Europe, right? So, so you have to believe, and hopefully they are talking, and hopefully it's not, you know, I don't think we're at a point where it's every man for themselves, you know how they say it, where it's like the U.S. is like, screw you guys and this and that. I got to believe that they are communicating, and I do think it adds credence to a Fed, Fed pivot. And again, the Fed pivot could be something as much as, hey, guys, we're going to just do 50, then 25, and then wait three months and see where we are. But that's anything like that would be a positive for, for the globe, basically. Futures trading in federal funds suggests that traders are again pricing rate cuts from May 2023. And while the market still sees a high chance of yet another 75 basis points, or 0.75 percentage point, rate hike next month, the pricing for the terminal rate, the expected high point for this interest rate hiking cycle, has come down to 4.4% from 4.75%. Yeah, I do think so. I think I think the interconnection of trade, we know the supply chain, right? Now, and interestingly enough, we've seen with semiconductors how how a lot of countries are now saying, hey, listen, we can't be reliant on China or this country right. for our semiconductors, so let's build out our own. But that just shows you how interconnected it is. And I continue to believe that it'll be more and more interconnected in the future. So with currencies, with with trade, with everything like that, it is so, so interconnected where we're seeing even with, even with Russia and, and energy, Energy, right? Think about that and the impact on Europe as a whole. So, so it is a global environment. And, and it, what it means is that if the U.S. falters, the rest of the world generally will. Markets are smelling blood in the water, but do they have enough evidence to price a policy turnaround? Not yet, in our view. The BOE's reluctance to buy gilts, or UK government bonds, is a sign that it hasn't given up the fight against inflation. While some Fed speakers have recently expressed concerns about the spillover effects of a stronger dollar, analysts are of the opinion that economic conditions don't warrant a pivot. So do you think we will see green October for Bitcoin? Tell us in the comments. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe. See you soon with the next video. Thank you so much for watching.